Hi, my name is Rick with Rapid Scan 3D. I have the Artec Leo Structured Light Scanner. It is a completely wireless scanner with built-in screen. And I'm gonna use it to quickly scan this 2020 Subaru Forester driver's side floor mat area. Here we go. All right, so now we have the file in Artec Studio. Um, you'll notice on the top right here, you're underneath the workspace, we have the Leo scan. Uh, we took about 2019 frames, uh, maybe a little overkill for scanning on this. We could have probably done about half of that, but that's okay. Uh, we want to make sure that we got the data. Um, we have some excess data here, so let's go ahead and just uh, go under the eraser tool. Uh, a lot of different tools on here to erase data. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this uh, lasso tool Real nice, kind of just lasso around an area. Um, anything that's highlighted will be red, and then you can see erase. Need some of this. And I think there's some data up here that we can delete out as well. All right. So now we have um, deleted some of the data that we're not going to be using in the, in the scan, going to the RE side. Uh, so I'm going to get out of here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is actually go into our global registration. And this is going to actually uh, use a, do a best fit process to align the scans together. Within our global registration as well as fine registration, we're able to utilize two different ways to align or register these uh, frames to each other. One is uh, by geometry, which we're doing. Um, so if the part has a lot of geometry, it's rich in geometry, we use this functionality, it's a lot faster. Or we can use geometry and texture. So anytime we use texture or color content, it takes a little bit longer, um, but using that is really good if you're scanning something that doesn't have a lot of geometry, let's say like a Coke can, um, but when we're scanning it, it has a lot of color content. We can actually use that color content for the alignment process as well. All right, so now that we have the global registration done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the fusion. Uh, I'm just gonna delete some of this little data up here. I've noticed that we uh, have a little extra data that we might not need. So just uh, helps to process the data a little faster. Um, any extra data we can erase that we're not using, it's always nice to be able to do that. All right. Uh, so next step here is actually to go back into our tools. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a mesh or fusion. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and do our uh, fast fusion. So while I go through this process, I'll tell you a little bit, a bit uh, about the fusion functionality. So Artec calls creating a mesh or fusion. So what we're doing is really collecting point cloud data. And through this process, we're fusing the points together as a mesh or triangle mesh. Um, so there's three different fusions in there. Uh, the first one you'll see that says outlier removal. It's actually not a fusion functionality, but what it does, it will remove outlying data. Um, so maybe there's something up here, these little pieces of data uh, that we didn't erase. Um, it'll delete that data so it won't be included in the mesh. Um, then we have fast fusion. Fast fusion creates a quick mesh. There's no post-processing functionalities that are included in this. Um, 
where Smooth Fusion and Sharp Fusion do some post-processing functionality. So uh, Smooth Fusion is really good if uh, you do have some errors or the part is kind of rough. Uh, the software will actually create the mesh and uh, eliminate some of those high points or low points. So it'll smooth out the data. Um, this is also really good if you're scanning and you didn't collect a lot of data, um, maybe didn't get enough frames. Uh, sometimes you'll get uh, orange peel effect. And with this smooth fusion functionality, it will actually smooth out the data to look a lot cleaner. Uh, sharp fusion, uh, when you're creating the sharp fusion, it will highlight any areas that there's really high geometry. Um, so if you're scanning some parts that have holes or sharp edges, this is really good. We use it about 99% of the time with our Arctic Space Spider. Um, also, those two fusions have the ability to fill holes. So you can fill them by a radius, you can make watertight meshes, or you could tell the software, you know what, I don't want to fill any holes. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. So once it's all done, basically you'll get a pop-up menu that will identify every hole. Um, when you're scanning parts, you might not want to fill holes. So this will give you some options on where to fill and what not to fill. I believe we're going to do another webinar just focusing on that. That'll be definitely geared more towards the Artec users that are already using it. Um, we'll go over each of the tools, uh, each of the fusions, and what's good about them, what's bad about them, how to use them in different applications, and show some examples. So uh, stay tuned for that one. We'll try to get that one done in May. All right, so now we have our mesh, uh, pretty good size file here. Um, we can actually go ahead and go file and export this out. Um, we can actually send this and just export it out as an STL or OBJ file on our computer, or if you like, we can just go straight to DesignX. All right, now we're going to go ahead and pass it over to Sean Parker with 3D Systems to show the reverse engineering side. Hello everyone. Today's demonstration is on how to surface model inside Design X. Here we have a polygonal mesh that's already been auto-surfaced and we've created several regions that we're then going to use to do mesh fits and loft wizards. I'll select this first one here, reorient my planes so that they intersect the region. And once I have a good fit, which is basically just on the outer bounds of the region itself, I'll then go to the next stage. Here's a preview of the surface and I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple more spline points and I will check the deviation since this is a carpeted uh, surface. Uh, the deviation is not that important. Now I'm going to go ahead and extend the surfaces, extend the surface a little bit past the bounds so that I have something to trim away uh, later on. I'll go ahead and repeat that process a couple more times to create several surfaces. Now I'm going to put a spline across this first one here, starting from one edge going to the other. Then I'll create another spline going from one edge to the other on the bottom surface here. I'm going to use these splines to create a fillet between the two. I'll go ahead and add in a couple of spline points, make sure they're relatively straight. Then I'll go into the modeling tab, select the filleting tool, and then I'll choose face fillet. Choose the top surface, the bottom surface, and then I want to tell it to hold both of these guide curves. Oh, that'll take just a second. Oh. I needed to select the splines instead of the sketch chains. There we go. I'll hit OK. And here we have the fillet. This time, I'm going to go back into 3D Sketch. I'm going to create some more splines. And I'm going to use these splines this time to cut these two. So again, going from one edge to the next. And repeating that on the bottom surface as well. I'll then use these two splines uh, as a cutting feature to cut these. I need to put in a splice point on each of them, and then I'm going to add in a couple more spline points. I'll exit out of the command, then I'll go into the trim tool, select the top surface, tell it which one I want, select the bottom surface, tell it which one I want to keep, and now I have two trim surfaces. Now I'm going to use the loft tool 
to connect them together. Basically what I'm doing here is setting the tangency to these two faces to create a loft between the two. I'll then sew them together and that will flip that other piece so that it's in the normal direction correctly. I'll then repeat this process over and over and over again to get the uh, side panels of this entire part. The green region on the bottom of the mesh is a plane, so I'll use a surface primitive to create a surface plane using that region. I'll go ahead and extend it a little bit, and then we'll trim it using those processes we did earlier. Once this is done, I can put down another 3D spline to cut the sidewalls to the appropriate size. Here I'm following the contour of this region, and I'm going to go up to uh, this corner here, I'm going to adjust it a little bit, and then continue going around the part. In this particular instance, I don't really care about hitting the middle of the surface, so I'm just going to go from edge to edge across all of these surface panels. Once this is done, I'll then use this spline as a cutting tool to trim the surface. Once again, in the Trim Surfaces tool, select the spline, and then select the thing that I want to keep. We continue these surface modeling processes until we have a model with all the detail that we need. I'm going to go ahead and step forward, and here I've added in several more features, all using these same methods. I'm now going to convert this surface model into a solid model by thickening the surface. I'll select the part, tell the software that I want to offset it by 3 millimeters. It'll then turn gray, and it is now a solid part. So now I want to add a little bit of detail onto the bottom surface here. To do this, I'm going to go up to the Sketch tab, select the Sketch tool, and put down a rectangle. Inside this rectangle, I'm going to put a picture of a floor mat. To do this, first I need to create a surface using this rectangle. So I'll set down the rectangle, and then go into Fill Face, select all four sides, which will give me a surface. I then need to convert that surface into a polygonal mesh surface, which I can then set down a texture on. So I'll convert it to mesh, and then I'll come into Add Texture. Here I'll select the picture that I want to use. Here's the floor mat, and then I'll just set down seed points. Just one here up in the corner with the one corresponding on the mesh, and so on. Two up in the corner, two on the mesh. I'll then hit the preview to see that's what I want. That's good, and then I'll hit the OK to complete the command. I'll then turn on my mesh, turn on my solid body, then go back into the Sketch tab, select Sketch, show my textured surface. I'm going to use the rectangles to replicate these grooves, or these bumps. I'm going to just adjust them finely. I'll go ahead and dimension these to make it a more round number. I'll move it into the orientation. And then I'll do a linear pattern to get all these at once. Once again, selecting the linear sketch pattern tool, I'll go ahead and highlight the entire rectangle and then pattern that over. I will adjust this a little bit to check the spacing, and then I'll go ahead and add in more instances. So 10 maybe, nope. Too much, so it's 12, that looks right. Maybe 13, nope, 12. So I'll go ahead and adjust the spacing just a little bit more, make sure that it's correct. And I'll go ahead and complete that command, and now I have 12 identical rectangles. From here, it's just a matter of sketching, so I'll go ahead and complete the sketches, and this is what it looks like. Now that all of my sketching is complete, I can go ahead and just do a simple extrusion into our current CAD model. To do that, I'll go up to the Modeling tab, select Extrude. Make sure it's going inside the current CAD model, or the existing CAD model, and say OK. And when I turn on my CAD, here you can see the new pattern. Thank you very much.